There's a number of us that are here demonstrating different skills from our Ojibwe people, but we're told it's time to come out and show people these things that are part of our, our culture and our history. Oh, there was a time when I moved, of course, away from the reservation and went out and experienced other ways of living. Oh, there's something that pulls you back to where your grandparents are buried and where your relatives are. As I returned there, then I started to have a lot of dreams. Then I was instructed on what, there were things I needed to do in, with my life. But these flutes came as a part of that. And, uh, and then I was uh, taught in different ways by different people how to uh, make them. And, then, uh, and given some of the music and then some of the other music came from going out and sitting by the lake or sitting in the woods and meditating on my own or sometimes from dreams that I would have. Living by the lake, listening to the, the sounds of the water and uh, the different types of birds and other animals that are around by the lake and in the woods there, it, it influences my music and in what I do. So I'm going to play a, a song with this flute that uh, you might hear some of the sounds in there sound similar to the bird that's on the end of it. There's a bird called a loon that lives up on the lake up there. In our culture, we're taught it's good to uh, sometimes imitate those birds and to talk with them. If there's a song that I want to play with a certain uh, animal or a certain location in mind, then usually I have to take a, one of the flutes that I'm familiar with that I know has the spirit of that animal or that location. It's a part of our culture to uh, connect with those things and to use that. <laughs> 